I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna do it. I, 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 I'm gonna do it. I always tell you that I'm very objective and I am fair. And I have to back up my objectivity and my fairness. This is your boy Rudy Rodriguez Shoma. You just saw my dog Batman in the background walking through. This is your boy Rudy Rodriguez Shoma from Come On Now the Podcast. And I'm bringing another edition of Rudy's Rants. But this is not gonna be a rant. This is gonna be a. How do you put it the nice way? I mean, this is going to be a acknowledgement because, you know, I have my, I've created this uh, Caitlin Clark hate brigade uh, fan club that exists. And it includes the likes of um, Drea Carter, Monica McNutt, Carolyn Peck just joined the club, Sabrina Ionescu, uh, Chidi Ngumake, uh Jamel Hill. Uh, now Brianna Stewart's in that club too. Diana Taurasi was in that club and then she left the club. She was given a pass to leave the club because she finally acknowledged who Caitlin Clark was after the Indiana Fever busted the Phoenix Mercury's ass a couple of weeks ago with Caitlin Clark having a great game and Diana Taurasi seeing firsthand what the hype truly was about. So Diana Taurasi is no longer part of that club. It's not a club you want to be in. And there's plenty more women who are in that club who have made a point to knock down Caitlin Clark for the, for the, for the sole purpose of propping up Angel Reese in this rookie of the year race with this nonsense about having teams having better record or plus minus or PER net 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 efficiency ratings or whatever nonsensical um, team stat you want to use for rookie of the year, they will use it and they keep using it. But I am here to give a kudos to one ESPN analyst who a few months ago went on a crazy, it was like a month ago, went on a crazy diatribe when Charles Barkley spoke about the WNBA. L. Duncan went nuts about a month or so, month, month and a half ago on men primarily, I guess you could say. But L. Duncan has now seemingly come around because L. Duncan recently said this. Rookie of the year race that looked like a foregone conclusion that was going to go Caitlin Clark's way. And I think it still will, but it's tightening. It's like the odds are tightening. It's getting much more interesting because you've got these two players who are playing incredibly well, making history their rookie year. I would say, and this is purely off of asking a lot of questions, working in this space, knowing what I know about basketball, and again, asking more questions, I would still maybe slightly give the edge to Caitlin putting everything else aside, like not just because of the name and the sellouts and like what she's doing for viewership, just the basketball part, right? Because most W players would tell you it is harder for a guard to translate right away in the W than it is a post player, right? And so mm -hmm. post players tend to have success a little bit quicker. And so just because she was already up against that aspect of it, I would still probably give that uh, that nod to Caitlin Clark for Rookie of the Year. But I think it's going to be a great race. And and what Angel is able to do for a Chicago team that, again, is just trying to sort of fight for playoff positioning, but to keep them um, in these games and to keep them in the storylines, like it's going to be great. Yeah, mine is 700, I think, as of the time of this recording, Caitlin Clark for Rookie of the Year. This was a fever team two years ago. They won two games. Yeah. Last last in the standings. They were last in the standings last year. I think they won four games. Mm -hmm. Now they're at nine, and they're a playoff team. She leads in points, assists, and efficiency. I don't think it should be as close as maybe people think it is going to be and we still have half of season to play but yeah caitlin clark i think is if you just look at the numbers it's right there Boom. so l duncan has acknowledged publicly how important caitlin clark is to the WNBA. she's acknowledged publicly that she is the rookie of the year understand that she has acknowledged that caitlin clark is the rookie of the year in that video she said it and in fact, her partner on there, I don't know his name. I need to find out who he is. I presume he's on ESPN, on ESPN as well. He also said, it's not really close when you're talking about basketball. So you can eliminate attendance, notoriety, voting for the, voting for, um, the All-Star game, money, all that shit. You can get rid of all of it. 
when we're talking about basketball, it's not close. So he said it as well. Kudos to you, whoever your name is, because I don't know your name. But I want to find out. But L. Duncan, who has been very vocal, said Caitlin Clark is the MVP. Even if it's close, she's in her opinion. And I think that's just the stance that people want to take to make this a race, make this a TV thing, a conversational piece. Because, yes, obviously, when you have two sides, you create conversation, you create dialogue, you create people like me doing these types of uh, rants or, or commentaries. It keeps you in the net. It keeps you in the, in the news. It keeps you going on. It keeps the narrative flowing of the WNBA. Look, the WNBA is at the highest point it's ever been in terms of attention. And they can all send Caitlin Clark a thank you card for that. But it's at the, at the highest point. I don't think it can get higher, actually. I don't think it really can. I think it can stay the same. I think it can stay at this, at this level. But I don't think it can get much higher because they're, they're getting, I mean, Caitlin Clark is getting 2 million viewers for games, a million five. Now, could it translate to, could it, trans, could it translate to some of these teams that play in these Band-Aid boxes, play in real arenas? It could. But also that comes with more expense. So those those are things you have to balance out, right? <clears throat> but yeah, it, it could translate to the Las, Las Vegas Aces getting out of a out of a casino arena and going to play at the T Mobile Center or Thomas and Mack Center for all of their home games. It could go, you know, like Seattle. Seattle plays in, a, in an NBA arena. Phoenix plays in an NBA arena. Um, Indiana plays in, in, in an NBA arena. Minnesota plays in an NBA arena. But Dallas plays in a 7,000 seat, seat box. Atlanta plays in a 4,000 seat box. Washington plays in a 3,000, 4,000 seat arena, little mini box. Chicago plays in a 10,000 seat building. Connecticut plays in a um, 7,000, 9,000 seat, something like that, 9,000 seat building. Um, the, the Liberty play, um, the Liberty play at the, at, at where Br the Brooklyn Nets play. So they play in an NBA arena as well. The Sparks. They play some games in Long Beach, and then they play in the Staples Center. The place is empty. Could it could it help there? Yeah, I think it could, but that's going to take other talent because Caitlin Clark is only one person, and she's not going to draw people to every building in the arena in the world at the same time. There needs to be other players that play like her to draw that type of attention because you already know who these players are. You already know who Asia Wilson is. You know who Kelsey Plum is. You know who Brianna Stewart is. Sabrina, Inescu, you know who these players are. They've been there, and no one's wanted to watch. No one's going. No one's watching. And now they're, they've are they inched up some because of the appearance of Caitlin Clark in their respective places. But at the same time, but at the same time, when you look at the, when you look at the perspective of it, how much more popular can the sport get? than it is right now. I don't know if it can get more popular. Maybe a little bit, maybe marginally, but you're not going to have all of a sudden 3 million people watching games. That's not going to happen. I mean, when they get to the, w the WNBA finals, I'd be shocked if the, any of these games average a million fans. I would be shocked if the WNBA finals averages a million viewers per game because it won't be Caitlin Clark playing. Last year, their largest, attempt, their largest watched game was, uh, I think, 900,000 in game four. So you're not going to see some influx where they're getting 3 million viewers for WNBA Finals games unless Caitlin Clark is playing in those games. So you need other players to develop and come through the system. So Paige Buchers next year, but she doesn't play like Caitlin Clark. She's really, really good, but she doesn't play like Clark. She doesn't shoot the ball from the parking lot. She doesn't have that, she doesn't have that parking lot range. She's not feared like that from that distance. That is what it will take is another player, two or three like her to do that. And it won't matter if they're black or white. That's why this race thing, it is, it, it, is it real? Yes, it's real. But for basketball people, it isn't about, it's not a race thing for, for why I'm cheering, for why I like her game. Real hoopers, and I'm not a hooper anymore, but I used to play basketball all the time as a young person. Real people that play basketball, that love basketball, I want to see good basketball. I want to see hoops. And I want to see people shooting jump shots from the parking lot. 
that's fun. If you can't dunk the ball and you refuse to lower the rim, despite the suggestions of so many men, including former NBA players, what do you do to, 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 to negate the dunk situation? Shoot jumpers. Be lights out from deep. That is how you will draw the attention. That's the way it gets done. So L. Duncan acknowledged Caitlin Clark, and I loved hearing it because it's because it's becoming such a, a, a nauseating thing to listen to where one's being propped while the other one who's doing so amazing is being dropped for made up details or made up metrics like team record and plus minus. It's silly. It's just silly. So, you know, I, kudos L. Duncan. You came around, you acknowledged it publicly, and I love to hear it because so many of your colleagues are not going in that direction. They are going out of their way to make this sound like it's some close, tight race. And even you kind of said it's a close race. I don't agree with that. I don't think it's close at all. But the, the rest of them are just saying that Angel Reese is the, is, is the rookie of the year. I'll tell you this. I think that by the end of the season, if this continues the way it's going, Kaitlyn Clark's going to be in the conversation for league MVP. She won't win, but she'll get votes. She'll be, she'll be at top five. She'll be top five for league MVP at this current rate. Because number one, I think she's going to end up leading the league in assists. She's at 7.4. She's second in the league. I think she'll end up leading the league in assists because her assist numbers continue to be double digits constantly now because her teammates are starting to catch more passes which means more buckets. She's going to end up getting more shots. I think she'll end up averaging probably 18 or 19 a game. She's going to have some breakout games where she busts out 25, 30. It's going to happen. It's a matter of when. She's averaging 16 a game. I think she ends up between 18 and 19 points a game. Her rebounding numbers, there was a, there was something I saw on Facebook, and I don't know if it's true or not. I, I'm going to presume I'm going to presume it is because it's on Facebook. But there was someone that posted something about how no one in the history of the WNBA has ever averaged 16.7 assists and six rebounds per game for a season. No one. I don't know if it's true, so do not quote me, but I saw it posted multiple places. I'm going to take it for what it is. If it's true, that's flipping remarkable. But if it's also, but if it's true, it also tells you how good she actually is and how far ahead of the curve she is, that she's doing that as a rookie. And that's some stat that's, across the history of the game for anyone. <laughs> but yeah, L. Duncan, good stuff. You are not in the Caitlin Clark hate brigade anymore. You acknowledged her like Roman Reigns. Acknowledge me. That's for my WWE fans. Yes, I still love me some WWE. Yeah, I'm a bit of a dork that way. But anyhow, that's all I got. Be sure to follow, like, and subscribe. Come on now. podcast on Instagram, Facebook, and TikTok, and come on now, pod on X. Come on now.